Hello everyone, it is Miss Courtney. I know I did not get to meet everyone, so I wanted to do a quick introduction. I am one of the substitutes for the North Campus and South Campus. Again, my name is Miss Courtney, and today we're going to be having a little fun with math. So this is kind of like a two-in-one project. Um, what you'll need to start off is a tennis ball. And parents, I'm going to need your help on this end. We're going to take a knife or scissors and cut a line in the middle of the tennis ball. So that way it acts as like a mouth. So as you can see, I already drew a face on my tennis ball, but feel free, get very creative children and make a monster out of your tennis ball. You have the mouth already cut out by the parents. Go ahead and design it. Add some yarn for here. Maybe glue on some googly eyes, however you want your monster to look. Go ahead, pause this video and create that silly monster. Once your creation is complete, you are going to need to find a dice. Right here I have a yard dice, very large, but you can use any board game dice. Any one that you have lying around will work. So our objective today is to feed our monster. He is hungry and we must make sure he is fed. Some things you could feed him with are coins like you see me doing right now. I also have to the right of me some ketchup packets that I just found laying around in our drawer. And then also we have some tape. You will see later on that I use the tape to make little square chips. Parents, this is a great activity for children of all ages. The tennis ball and making the monster talk is great for the fine motor skills, as well as the counting activity. When you roll the dice, whatever number it lands on, you're going to feed your monster that amount. I think it's also a great idea to try different food items for your monster. As you can see right now, I am rolling for the ketchup. I got four. So when I tried feeding him all four ketchup packets, I soon realized they were not all going to fit. I tried so hard to get them in and unfortunately by the third one I had so much trouble that I just could not finish it. He was a full monster. This encourages children to get an understanding for the different sizes of objects compared to the monster's mouth, for example. For younger children, you could definitely use the monster more for biting or grabbing things and picking them up. You could use something as simple as a blanket and see if the monster can get a hold of the blanket and lift it up. Another possibility could be like a hide and seek option where you place a small scarf in the monster's mouth and see if your child recognizes it and tries to pull it out. Again, this activity is definitely a two-in-one with the older children and great for the fine motor skills. Take your time decorating the monsters. I'm so excited to see the different individual monsters you will create and also the great news is I tried bouncing the ball afterwards and it still works so you can still use this ball for other activities well bye bye everyone see you soon